Let's talk about the meanings of words like up and down and the electric field inside a, an electric circuit. This lecture is about fundamental concepts in electric circuits theory, like what's electric charge, electric voltage, electric current, how to compute electric power. The goals are, at the end of this lecture, I expect that every student can answer questions like, what is voltage? What's the units for voltage? What is current and its units? And about electric current, is it made out of positive or negative charges? Does it really matter? How many coulombs are there in an electron? What is the meaning of volt? What is the meaning of ampere? The reference for voltages. Is it an absolute or a relative term? We begin with an analogy. The analogy is inside an electric or electronic circuit, everything happens inside an electric field. And I mean everything. Yeah, the same big E that you studied in first year physics, the one with that one, the one that you measured in uh, newtons per coulombs, right? But you also measure that in an equivalent unit that was volts per meter. Exactly, that is a field. Everything inside an electric or electronic circuit happens inside an electric field, that field. But this is what we call a force field, yes, because it applies forces to electric charges inside the field, that's right. But we are used to another kind of force field. We'll use an analogy to introduce the basic concepts of voltage and current in circuits. We begin with a field we're more familiar with, another force field. One that applies forces to masses inside. Did you guess which one's that? Sure, that one, the gravitational field. Up and down, higher, lower, above, below, all of those are words that have meaning only because you and I were born, we were raised, and we continue to exist inside a gravitational field. Our perception of up and down or above or below, of higher or lower than, all of that, they depend on the gravitational field that we live in. In Australia, up is the other way, remember? Heights define where we are inside the gravitational field. Well, answer this question, which way is up? This person says, up's that way. No, 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 up's this way, this way, that way, the other way. Hey, wait a minute, up is this way. Which one's right? Everybody is right. Why is that? Because everybody is pointing against the gravitational pull on masses. That's why. That's why. Let's look at it this other way. We have a red ball and a blue ball. Which one's higher? I don't know. It all depends on the gravitational field. Show me the gravitational field and I'll tell you which one of those two balls is higher. Well, if this is a gravitational field, oh, the answer is this. The red ball is higher and the blue ball is lower. But if the gravitational field is like this, then the blue ball is higher and the red ball is lower. Hmm. What about this gravitational field? In this case, they are exactly at the same height. Speaking of heights, heights are, are, are given with respect to a reference, which is a reference which normally on our planet, that reference for height is the sea level, and then we measure how high every point on the surface is with respect to that reference. This one, 1400 meters, 600 meters. Even below that reference, we can use negative numbers like this negative 70 meters, negative 50 meters. All right, let's identify those points with letters A, B, C, D. Changes of heights. Very often we move, we have a trajectory going from an origin to a destination. We define climbs and drops, origin and destination. When we move up, we define a climb as how many meters we're going to climb up this way. A climb from an origin O to a destination D is how much higher the destination 
is than the origin. That means that if the destination is higher than the origin, we have a positive climb and the other way around. We can also measure drops as the drop from an origin to a destination tells us how much higher the origin is than the destination. When we have a positive drop, that means that the origin is higher than the destination. So if we drop from B to C, the drop is height of the origin, 1400, minus height of the destination, 600. That is 800 meters of positive drop. It's a positive drop. We're moving downwards. Let's look at that. The drop from B to C is the height of B minus height of C. Or the drop from A to C, which is also a positive number, even though a much smaller one. But we can have a drop from A to B that turns out to be a negative number. Of course, that negative number is a warning. It tells us, hey, you're dropping from a lower to a higher point. And that is perfectly okay. The point here is that heights are relative. The first thing we do in measuring heights is we choose a reference and then we let it be. We don't change it.